So hello. So in this fifth part of this Fourier analysis course, we are returning back to some of the classical aspects of Fourier analysis. In chapter 8, we looked at an application to celestial mechanics and again we used some of the ideas in the early chapters in this course, namely chapter 1. Now we look at again classical aspects and I'm calling this chapter odds and ends. Some of those tiny little things that got left out because we have to cover many other things and so we take up these things and consolidate them in this chapter and what are the topics that we discussed in this chapter uniform convergence of Fourier series we give some sufficient condition when will the Fourier series of a two pi periodic function will converge uniformly to the given function and we'll prove Dirichlet's theorem on pointwise convergence at points where the function has one-sided derivatives this was me mentioned in the very first part of this course but I said that we'll prove this towards the end in a later part. So here it comes and then we will discuss an important topic called Riemann's localization principle and we will discuss the case of monotone functions, functions that might be discontinuous and yet monotone. For this we will need what is known as the Bonnet's mean value theorem. We will give a complete proof of Bonnet's mean value theorem because it is usually not found easily in textbooks. It used to be available in all the classical books but modern books on analysis somehow have left out these kinds of things. And this is very essential proof of Dirichlet's theorem. The first of these four items is very easy namely the case of uniform convergence of Fourier series and we will take up this first. The theorem says Suppose f from r to r is a 2 pi periodic continuous function and it is piecewise smooth. What do I mean by piecewise smooth? That means that I have a partition of the interval minus pi pi into finitely many non-overlapping intervals. On each piece the function is differentiable and at the interface at those junction points the points of the partition the function has one-sided derivatives these one-sided derivatives may be different but they are both finite so this is piecewise smooth function then the Fourier series of f of x converges absolutely and uniformly to f of x examples of such continuous 2 pi periodic piecewise smooth functions. Here is an example. For instance, you can look at the function which is a triangular wave. Take mod x and extend it as a 2 pi periodic function. Remember that uniform convergence has not touched upon so far. We only uh, talked about pointwise convergence in the very first chapter. Uniform convergence requires a little more techniques but they are very easy. It's a nice application of the Bessel's inequality that we established in the second chapter. So let a n and b n be the Fourier coefficients of f of x and a n prime b n prime be the Fourier coefficients of f prime of x. Because of our hypothesis of piecewise smoothness, the derivative f prime is continuous except possibly at finitely many points and at these finitely many points the derivative has a finite jump discontinuity. In particular, the derivative is an L2 function for instance. What are the definition of the coefficients? A n prime equal to 1 upon pi integral minus pi to pi f prime of x cos nx dx. We can integrate by parts. We can integrate by parts and the boundary terms will cancel out and we can check that a naught prime is 0 a n prime is n b n and b n prime is minus n a n. Since the function f prime is in L2, we can use Bessel's inequality and we can apply the Bessel's inequality to the Fourier coefficients of f prime of x. a naught prime was 0, so there is no constant term. Summation n from 1 to infinity n squared mod a n squared plus mod b n squared less than or equal to 1 upon pi integral minus pi to pi 
mod f prime x the whole square dx. Now we are in a position to establish the absolute and uniform convergence of the Fourier series. We begin with a very simple observation mod a n cos n x plus mod b n sin n x clearly less than or equal to square root of mod a n squared plus mod b n squared. So if we show that the series summation n from 1 to infinity root mod a n squared plus mod b n squared converges then we can use Weierstrass's m test to conclude that summation a n cos n x plus b n sin x converges absolutely and uniformly on the interval minus pi pi. So our task is to prove that 9.1 the series 9.1 converges and that is pretty easy. So let us write this summation n from 1 to capital N root mod a n squared plus mod b n squared. We are looking at the nth partial sum. You introduce a 1 upon n in the business. So you, you multiply and divide by n and use cauchy schwarz inequality in the very first line. So when you use cauchy schwarz inequality you get summation n from 1 to capital N 1 upon n squared and the second factor will be summation n from 1 to capital N n squared mod a n squared plus mod p n squared. It is a simple application of cauchy schwarz inequality and the summation n from 1 to capital N is clearly less than or equal to summation n from 1 to infinity 1 upon n squared. Everything here is positive or at least non-negative. So we get these inequalities are very easy to establish. What is summation n from 1 to infinity 1 upon n squared? Right from chapter 1 we got it as pi squared by 6 but we really do not need the exact value. All we need is some universal constant c and then there is this integral minus pi to pi mod f prime x the whole square dx and so the partial sums are bounded and hence summation n from 1 to infinity root mod a n squared plus mod b n squared converges and so summation a n cos n x plus b n sin n x converges absolutely and uniformly and that is exactly what we wanted to establish and we have proved our first result on uniform convergence of Fourier series. Now what is the advantage of this? The large number of examples fall under the scheme of things. So now having discussed uniform convergence we will take up the next item in the agenda namely pointwise convergence of the Fourier series at places where the function has one sided derivatives. So a large number of examples will fall under this scheme. The main point is that with regard to convergence of Fourier series at a specific point x0 the behavior of the function far away from x0 does not matter. What we of course need is that the function must be in L1, the Fourier coefficients must make sense otherwise we cannot get started. So to get started we assume that the function is in L1 of minus pi pi and at a specified point x0 in the vicinity of x0 we are going to assume that the function is reasonably well behaved namely we are going to assume the existence of one sided derivatives at x0. Away from x0, say outside a delta neighborhood of x0, it really does not matter. The function can be very badly behaved. So we take up this as the next theorem, theorem 98. Suppose f is a 2 pi periodic function on R which is continuous at x0 and piecewise smooth. What does piecewise smooth mean? In the earlier case we took continuous and piecewise smooth. Here we are going to assume continuity only at x0 and here we are going to use piecewise smooth everywhere which basically means that I can break the interval into say a which is equal to t0 less than t1 less than t2 da, 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 less than tn and tn is b. I have taken a partition of the interval a b and on each sub interval tj tj plus 1 the function is smooth at the end point the function has one sided derivatives and at the junction points t1, t2, t3 etc the one sided derivatives exist and the function may even be discontinuous at these junction points t1, t2, t3. For example I can take this function which is a signum function f of x equal to 1 
on the interval 0 to pi and minus 1 on the interval minus pi to 0. The function is evidently differentiable on the closed interval 0 to pi. It is also differentiable at the closed interval minus pi to 0. At 0 the value does not really matter, we can take whichever we want. So, you got this kind of a prescription. Now, so for such a function, so it is a piecewise smooth 2 pi periodic function and the one sided derivative exists at x naught. The Fourier series of f converges to f of x naught at the point x naught. We must employ the notations of chapter 1 and recall that d n t is the Dirichlet kernel which is the most important thing as regards point wise convergence and s n f of x naught is basically the sum of the first 2 n plus 1 terms a naught plus a 1 cos x plus b 1 sin x plus dot 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 plus a n cos n x plus b n sin n x the first 2 n plus 1 terms in the Fourier series that is the nth partial sum which we just call it nth partial sum for convenience s n f comma x naught. And what exactly is happening is that we must look at the difference s n of f comma x naught minus f of x naught. s n of f comma x naught we computed in the very first chapter. It is a convolution with the Dirichlet kernel. It is integral from minus pi to pi f of x naught minus t d n t d t. And remember that the integral d n t d t from minus pi to pi is 1. So, f of x naught can be written as integral f of x naught d n t. So, that this difference s n f x naught minus f of x naught can be combined into one integral minus pi to pi f of x naught minus t minus f of x naught d n t. And we need to understand the behavior of this integral as n tends to infinity. So, now what we do is that we split the integral into two integrals, an integral from 0 to pi and an integral from minus pi to 0 and the discussion is parallel for the two integrals. So, we will just discuss the first one, the other one is left for you to check. So, let us go from 0 to pi f of x naught minus t minus f of x naught d n t d t. We have to show this goes to 0 as n tends to infinity. Now, we also need to recall the expression for the Dirichlet kernel. The Dirichlet kernel has an innocent factor of 2 pi which I am putting on the left hand side and you have to use the addition formula for the sine and you are going to get a cos n t term and a sine t by 2 term. In one of the terms the sine t by 2 cancels out you simply left with cos n t. In the other term you got a sine n t and you got cos t by 2 upon sine t by 2 that is cot t by 2. It is this cot t by 2 that is causing all the problems. And let us do the following, let us multiply and divide by t. Let us divide by t and call the ratio g t. So, what is g t? f of x naught minus t minus f of x naught upon t. Now, remember that we are assuming that f has a one sided derivative. So, as t approaches 0 from the right, this 9.3 has a limit as t goes to 0. Because we are divided by t, we end up multiplying by t. So, t cos n t that is quite innocent. T cot t by 2. Now, this object has a limit as t goes to 0 and by assigning the value of this as 2 at t equal to 0, we prove that the thing actually becomes continuous. So, by prescribing this value properly at the origin, this actually becomes a continuous function. You will call it a removable discontinuity. What we need to do is that we need to ap appeal to the riemann lebesgue lemma. So, what happens is you take a small piece 0 delta and the function g t has a limit as t goes to 0. So, it is bounded on 0 delta. Okay. So, because of that this function g is certainly in L1. Because this function g is in L1, t times g t is also in L1. So, t g t cos n t. This thing goes to 0 by riemann lebesgue lemma. And what about the other term? The other term is t cot t by 2 that also became continuous and g is certainly in L1. So, that into sin n t d t that also goes to 0 by riemann lebesgue lemma. So, the riemann lebesgue lemma comes to our rescue and the proof is completed. The conditions on the hypothesis of f can be considerably relaxed, but we are not really interested in giving you the most general theorem in this direction. 
we can for example consult the monumental two volume text of Antony Zygmunt uh, called trigonometric functions on page 52 you can see some generalizations a large class of functions that are of interest in engineering will be piecewise smooth so will well fall into the scope of our theorem all right so the same argument the same ideas can be used to prove one more result called the localization principle that is theorem 99 suppose f of x is a 2 pi periodic function which is integrable on minus pi pi that is f is in l1 and the function is zero on a certain open sub interval right i is a sub interval of minus pi pi and open sub interval this open sub interval could be terribly small then the fourier series for the function f of x converges to zero at all points of i in particular if you take two functions f and g so if you have two functions f and g which are both in l1 and the two functions agree on a certain sub interval i then on this sub interval i their fourier series will behave alike that is they'll both converge or maybe they'll both diverge throughout this open interval i now why is this result important or interesting let us contrast this thing to the case of a power series now suppose i give you a function f of x which is analytic and it is identically zero on a certain open subdomain g now i take a point p in this g and you what happens to the power series the function is zero at p and it is zero in a neighborhood of p so the first derivative is zero the second derivative is zero the third the power series itself is a zero power series and so the zero power series evidently converges to zero and so this kind of a result which is completely trivial in the context of analytic functions but look at it in the context of fourier analysis now what is given to you f of x is zero on a small open interval i so this open interval could have a very small length but away from this open interval the function f of x may be non-zero the function f of x is non-zero integral from minus pi to pi fx cos nx need not be zero integral minus pi to pi f of x sin nx need not be zero the Fourier series is not zero all the coefficients in fact can be non-zero and it is a non-trivial to see that the sum of the series must be zero the fact that the sum of the series is zero throughout i then becomes very significant because you couldn't have predicted this simply by staring at the series you need to do analysis in order to draw this conclusion so the localization principle of Riemann is a non-trivial result but it is not trivial you use the same circle of idea the Dirichlet kernel take a point x naught in i and take a small delta neighborhood of x naught x naught minus delta x naught plus delta contained in i and then do the same thing that we did earlier the nth partial sum of the Fourier series sn f x naught is the convolution f of x naught minus t dnt dt and then f of x naught is f of x naught dnt dt integral from minus pi to pi take the difference you get integral from minus pi to pi f of x naught minus t minus f of x naught dnt dt and split the integral the split the integral over the piece mod t less than delta and mod t bigger than delta now let us look at the integral over mod t less than delta what happens when mod t is less than delta anyway f of x naught is anyway zero if mod t is less than delta this is also zero and so this integral itself is zero what happens when mod t is bigger than delta over this interval we need to look at the Dirichlet kernel carefully 2 pi times dnt will be cos nt plus sin nt into cot t by 2 this cot t by 2 is actually continuous on the interval delta less than mod t less than pi and so riemann lebesgue lemma can be used on the interval delta less than mod t less than pi so there is no problem and the other factor what is the other factor f of x naught minus t minus f of x naught that anyway is in l1 so there is no problem and so the result follows from the riemann lebesgue lemma so the riemann's localization principle theorem 99 has been established 
Okay, let us discuss the behavior at a point of discontinuity. A model case is when the function has just one discontinuous point, the origin. So you would look at the signum function f of x equal to 1 if x is positive minus 1 if x is negative. Look at it in the interval minus pi pi. Take the 2 pi periodic extension of the signum function and draw the graph. The graph looks like a square wave train sigma x. This is called the signum function extended as a 2 pi periodic function. What are the Fourier series for sigma x? Use the formulas a for a0, an and bn. It is an odd function so the cosines are all 0 and the a0 term is 0. Only the sine series will remain and you can quickly calculate the coefficients. It is 4 upon pi times sin x plus 1 third sin 3 x plus 1 fifth sin 5 x plus da da da. Now by theorem 99, the Riemann's localization principle, which are the two functions I am going to take? I am going to take the constant function 1 and I am going to take the signum function. I could look at this in the open interval 0 pi. On the open interval 0 pi, we know that the two series are going to behave alike. So the series converges to the signum function at points except the origin and plus minus pi. Plus minus pi and origin are excluded and all other points, the sum of this series is going to return you back the original function sigma x. What happens at the origin? At the origin, the series converges to 0. So all the terms are 0, simple. And why does it converge to 0? Because it is the arithmetic mean of the right hand limit and the left hand limit. Namely, it is one half of sigma of 0 plus plus sigma of 0 minus. So at the point of discontinuity, the Fourier series converge to the arithmetic mean of the right hand limit and the left hand limit. Now we want to show that the same thing happens in far greater generality. And, but we shall use the case of the signum function to prove the more general theorem. Signum function is easy because we could directly see what the Fourier series is. And from the, by looking at the Fourier series, we know that at the origin, it converges to the arithmetic mean of the right hand limit and the left hand limit. And away from the origin, we were able to use the Riemann's localization principle to prove that the series converges to the actual function. So now theorem 100, suppose f is piecewise smooth on minus pi pi and has one-sided derivatives at x0 and it is discontinuous at x0, that is it has a jump discontinuity there. The Fourier series of f converges at x0 to the value one half of f of x0 plus plus f of x0 minus. Here again, I'd like to make a small clarification. Remember that the one-sided derivative means that on the open interval, here the meaning of the word one-sided derivative is you take the open interval x0 to x0 plus delta, the, the function is differentiable on this interval x0 to x0 plus delta and the derivative has a limit as you approach x0 from the right, similarly from the left. That is the meaning of saying that the function has one-sided derivative at x0 and the one-sided derivative of the jump discontinuity. We reduce the problem to the continuous case. So let alpha be the jump, okay. So alpha is the right hand limit minus the left hand limit or the saltus of the function. Now use a signum function and you correct the function f of x by subtracting off a multiple of the signum function, which multiple alpha by 2. Why have I chosen alpha by 2? Because if I choose this alpha by 2, exactly alpha by 2, then this new function f of x becomes continuous at x0. Calculate the right hand limit and calculate the left hand limit. It is displayed here and take the difference. The difference will exactly be 0. So capital F is continuous at 0 and it has the one sided derivatives also at 0. So we have proved the theorem when the one sided derivatives exist and the function is continuous. For that, we know that the Fourier series converges to f of x0, namely f of x0 plus or f of x0 minus, the two values are equal and it equals the arithmetic mean 
of the little f of x naught plus plus little f of x naught minus upon 2. You can check this and I am leaving this for you to check. What is the partial sum for little f? The partial sum for little f is the partial sum for capital F plus alpha by 2 times the partial sum for the signum function x minus x naught. Look at the definition of little f. Little f is capital F plus alpha by 2 signum function translated by x naught. And the partial sums will simply be linear. So now the second term goes to 0 because we already proved the theorem for the signum function. Remember that for the Fourier series for the signum function converges to the signum function at points of discontinuity it converges to the arithmetic mean of the right and left hand limits. So the second term goes to 0 at x naught and the first term converges to f of x naught plus plus f of x naught minus upon 2 and so the result is established. I think this will be a good place to stop this capsule and we will continue this in the next capsule. Thank you very much.